We run a quite wide-ranging measurement exercise. We've got a mechanism that uses adverts we place with Google, and we're collecting around 750 to 800,000 a day worldwide. The problem is we can't control which parts of the world they come from. So random could mean a lot of data gets collected in China or a lot of data gets collected in Indonesia. And we're trying to account for these variations in the sampling size and adjust for the population model that we get from the ITU. They publish statistics on which countries have what number of users connected at what time. And we've used that to make an adjustment model to get our numbers more in line with the population statistics. Now, the interesting thing is, we don't think other people are doing this. And they're depending on their measurement techniques, seeing genuinely random samples worldwide, but they don't take account of these variations in different countries. And we think that may be why some of them are seeing a slightly higher count, because they're measuring more developed economies that have a higher penetration of IPv6, and they're not adjusting for the relatively large number of users in China, or in India, or in Indonesia, that they may not be sampling the same way. We've started doing some quite interesting work looking at the relative market share of different internet providers. Now, it's a funny thing, all of the companies know their own market share. They have a fairly strong sense of how many customers they have. But there's no international collecting activity that actually publishes neutral, unbiased statistics on the relative amount of customers that different companies have. But a side effect of the way we're measuring is we think we're starting to get insights into if not exactly close to the top 10, top 15, and the relative market share of all the countries of the world. And that's getting really very interesting, the relativities of who's got how much traffic and where. We think it might be more applicable to a number of people.